this is a brief talk about what we learned from the article by Palgi and Abramovich about death and cross-cultural perspective. What they tell us is that death awareness is a kind of self-awareness. That is, the funeral offers us an opportunity to think about what are the things that are important to us in our lives, the sentiments of what we think about life, and also the sentiments of solidarity among people. That is, a funeral offers this opportunity, which we don't normally get in life, to talk about these particular issues that are important to us. In many societies, they tell us that the fate of the soul, the fate of the person, the fate of the society in some sense, is connected to the fate of the body. Just as the body is formless in death and becomes increasingly disgusting in the intermediary period, so the soul is homeless. So we see here the same themes that we've already seen in Hertz and in Malinowski, Palagin Abramovich are telling us uh, as well. And since this period is always the most difficult, across cultures it becomes uh, shortened as much as possible. There's a desire to shorten this transitional period. They also point out to us that uh, in some ways the naming of a newborn is a way of, uh, the naming of a newborn after someone who has died is a way of reflecting the idea of the spirit of the dead being alive and that the spirit of that dead person enters into the newborn and so naming a child after someone who has died is often a way uh, even of a sense of expressing the idea that life goes on indefinitely. Uh, it is in a sense sometimes naming of a newborn after someone has died we can see as a kind of secondary burial or a final burial when a new life is given the name of somebody who lived before, <coughs> that is as if to say that person is now elsewhere and this newborn is the person. Uh, we saw death as a rite of passage. I'm not going to uh, review that. That is reviewed very much in Palgin Avramovich. We require a symbolization of continuity, imaginative forms that allow us to transcend death in order to confront and not be defeated by the fact that we die. Very often this is embedded in the idea of the family. Though I die, my family lives on, which is very much why the family is involved in the process of commemorating the dead. And of course, it is necessary for people not to die without family. It is not just biological, it may be tribal, it may be social, it may be national. In a sense, when an important leader dies, Palgin Abramovich are telling us it is as if we are all uh, in the family of the leader. These feelings are often conflated with religious sentiments. In other words, that in religion, the idea that we are living on in our family is embedded. Another form of immortalization that we have is the creation of works that live longer than us. Uh, music, writing, uh, in a sense, uh, creating something that has an immortality beyond life uh, is a way of making sure that we are not dead when our bodies are, are over. Um, the ceremonies of death, as they point out, are made up of several components, and modern society views death as a massive admission of failure it's another example of uh, the death denial characteristics of the modern world. We try to, whenever possible, create something that will last longer than us, and uh, that is why so much of that is part of modern society. What you've seen in all of these things is that many of the elements in these other articles, Malinowski, Palgin, Abramovich, Campbell, really reiterate what we saw in Hertz and that's why we spend so much time on Hertz. Okay.